this special bite-sized episode of the POA podcast, we talk with National Chair Mark Fairhurst on the challenges posed by the new anti-strike law currently going through Parliament and the government's evidence to the prison service pay review body. The anti-strikes legislation, as most people may know it, but to give it its proper title, the Strikes Minimum Service Levels Bill is being pushed like mad by the government through the parliamentary process. It's in the Lords at the moment. It's about to come back to the Commons. It basically says that the Secretary of State has the power to set minimum service levels, minimum numbers of people who must be on duty in a range of uh, occupational sectors, uh, and that if people don't comply with that, then they'll lose their immunity from unfair dismissal and stuff like that. What's the significance of that, Mark, for the POA, given that large numbers of the union's members aren't allowed by law to strike anyway? So in England and Wales, prison officers are under a permanent high court injunction, which is preventing us from taking any form of industrial action whatsoever. Things like, I can't even tell my members to work to rule, to refuse to do overtime, to refuse to perform voluntary tasks for which they receive no remuneration at all. I can't tell them to do any of those things, otherwise I'll end up in court. So it's really draconian what we're under. What this proposed new legislation ultimately does for us is it affects our OSG colleagues, operational support grades who do have the right to strike, prison officers in Scotland who do have the right to strike, and of course our members in secure psychiatric hospitals who also have the right to strike, they come under the NHS umbrella. So it will have an impact on us moving forward because at the moment there are no restrictions apart from the other anti-trade union legislation brought in by this government where we have to meet thresholds. So it will have an impact on us. That's why we're joining with other unions to hopefully fight this bill and ultimately defeat it. I know it's in the Lords at the moment. Good thing about the Lords is that we've got a lot of friends in the Lords, a lot of peers there are former trade union barristers and former trade union leaders. They'll no doubt rip it apart, but with the Tory majority in Parliament, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks or says, that will ultimately go through. So obviously those those grades who do have the legal right to strike are clearly directly affected. What would you say the overall impact is, though, for the union as a whole? Well, as a whole, as, as the POA as a whole, we've always fought back against vindictive and draconian legislation. And my attitude is to change a bad law, you have to break a bad law. And we're not afraid to do that. And the reason we're not afraid to do that is because our members, their safety, their terms and conditions, their working environment, it's not up for negotiation. It's paramount. They have to be safe at work. They have to have the tools to do the job. They have to be respected. And they shouldn't be subject to bullying and intimidation from any government agency, which forces them to work unsafely. And when that all comes to a head, we take what's called protest action, which is, in some eyes, industrial action under another name, but it's the only thing we've got left. We, we do have the right to protest, and we'll exercise that. Now, luckily enough at the moment, industrial relations are good, and we're getting on with a lot of business in the right manner. But when people don't listen to us and violence spikes and our members are at risk, if we haven't got the right to strike, where do we go? Where are we supposed to just put up with that day in, day out? We've got to do something if people aren't listening. And, and what we do is protest. and. We've been in contact with other unions and saying, look, we've been under this right to strike being removed since 1994. That's when it first you know, hit us. And we've been campaigning ever since to get it rescinded. They got it rescinded in Scotland and they've never exercised their right to strike since they've had it reinstated. So it's working quite well there. So why they won't give us the right to strike back is, is anybody's guess. We're not afraid to use it. But we've got thresholds to meet, as every other trade union has, and they are high thresholds in the public sector. What strikes me about the the minimum service levels bill is that there is so much power, discretionary power, concentrated in the hands of the Secretary of State, that that actually it's not so much a way of constraining industrial action as, as almost uh, outlawing industrial action. What, what they're trying to do, let's be honest about this, what the government are trying to do is make it 
absolutely pointless to take strike action because when we've ever walked out over our safety concerns we've always maintained a minimum service level we've always had staff on duty in the jail maintaining a minimum service now sometimes those staff can't get out because they freeze the gate in prisons and nobody can get in or out and i've been out on strike myself at the gate and a governor's come out and said we've got trouble on a wing can some staff come in and, and sort it out and we've left the picket line to sort out trouble inside the jail once that's been resolved we've returned to the picket line so we've always acted responsibly as a union we've always had staff on duty realizing that you know we've got to do something to keep people in our care as safe as they can be if we're protesting outside so we've always acted responsibly but what people have got to understand is and i've spoken to a lot of colleagues in different unions for example the rcn have just taken strike action over the past couple of weeks if this legislation comes in and the rumours are true that the Secretary of State wants to implement an 80% staffing level as a minimum service, then take this example on board. So the staffing crisis in the NHS, the staffing shortages, are just as severe as we're experiencing in the prisons. So, for example, a colleague of mine who's in the RCN recently got on strike, they should have on duty at any given time 12 practitioners but because they've got six vacancies, the most staff they ever have on duty on any given day is about four. Now, if you're saying 80% of your staff have got to be on duty during a strike day, in some industries, and given that example, you'll actually be forced to put more staff on duty during a strike day than you've got on a normal day. So how are you going to get around that? I mean, OSGs, we've got loads of vacancies for OSGs. If we walk them out on strike and they want 80% of the staff on duty, we'd never reach that. So we'd be breaking legislation straight away because we can't provide 80% of the staff on duty on any given day because we've got that many vacancies. It's absolutely nonsense. It shows, uh, it shows a certain lack of joined up thinking. I think everyone who's listening would, would agree to that. Now, the strikes minimum service levels bill is not the only thing that's happened in the last couple of days, because we heard that the government has submitted its evidence to the pay review body. And it's basically saying we think the pay review body should award pay increase, recommend pay increases of, of three to three and a half percent for a wide range of groups, including pr prison officers. What's the union's view on that? Well, our employers submissions were submitted yesterday late again and their recommendations are for those staff bands three four and five which is your prison officer grades on fair and sustainable terms and conditions they've recommended a four percent increase they've recommended an uplift of two thousand pounds for our operational support grades which equates to a ten percent increase but you've got to bear in mind that they have to increase that pay because the minimum wage goes up in April. So they've got no choice. They have to increase it anyway. And then for our most experienced staff, we've still got a lot of people who are what are classed as closed grades. They've said absolutely nothing for them. Zero, absolutely nothing for the very people they can't afford to lose from the, the service and have kept this ship afloat for decades. They've a offered them absolutely nothing. Now, I've, on behalf of my members, expressed my disgust at what I called an insulting offer from the employer. I've already expressed those comments to Phil Koppel, our Director General, and I think it is an insult. It's an insult for one to say when inflation is 10.1% today, we're only going to offer you 4%. My council tax is going up by 5%. Everybody's energy bills have doubled. People are struggling to put fuel in the car to travel to work. The cost of food through the roof. And God forbid you want a bit of luxury. You're going to have to scrap around for money to get a luxury, aren't you? So I think it's really insulting. And all this rubbish about the government saying we can't afford to give public servants above inflation pay rises. Of course you can. If you can afford to give your mates billions of pounds of taxpayers' money for PPE that we've had to scrap, then you can afford to give public servants a decent pay rise. And this bill, will only make matters worse 
if it goes through. And the pay awards, you know, if you're going to offer any public servants less than the inflation rate, you're asking for trouble. Why should we accept anything less? I think a lot of people look at the the pay review body and think, well, that's that's a compensationary measure to make up for the fact that prison officers in England and Wales anyway don't have the right to, to, to go on strike. But when the government gives such a clear steer as to the outcome that they desire, what does that do for the credibility of the pay review body itself? Well, we're quite fortunate because this current pay review body we're under got a very good chair, very sensible, and seems to fly in the face of what the government want them to do. So I've got no problem with our pay review body. But what I will say is, and not a lot of people realise this, when the government say you're subject to an independent pay review body, it's that independent that the government choose who's on the independent pay review body and pay them and give them a remit letter, giving them restrictions on what they should be awarding public sector people. So how can you say it's independent? It's not independent at all. An independent pay review body is chosen by a collection of the employer and the recognised trade unions, and as trade unionists on it. So how can it be independent? And as you say, that's the only mechanism we've got that is supposed to compensate us for not having the right to strike. Well, all OSGs have the right to strike and are still subject to a pay review body. Why are they not removed from the remit group and give us collective bargaining rights over their pay? You, you've got a government that's saying to the pay review body, here's the remit letter, don't go above this budget, don't go above that budget. And then when, on occasions, they do recommend a decent pay rise for prison officers, this government now have the power to say, we're going to veto that, we don't agree with it, we're not paying it. Ridiculous. Yeah, and I think it's important to stress that the pay review body process is it's not a done deal by any means yet. There's a lot of that road left left to run. But obviously the government's given a clear indication about where it wants where it wants to end up. With these challenges, Mark, the, the, the strikes bill, the pay review body submission by, by the government and, and so on, I suppose now more than ever, prison staff need their union. More than ever in any workplace, no matter what industry you are employed in. You need to be a member of that recognised trade union for your industry, without a shadow of a doubt. Now more than ever, with everything that's going on, your workplace rights, in fact, your human rights, a human right is your right to withdraw your labour if you feel aggrieved. Your human rights are about to get abolished, obliterated by this government, because this bill will go through. The only protection you have is to join your recognised trade union. The recognised trade union for frontline prison staff is the POA. We've been around since 1939. We're not going away. We will not back down. We can continue to challenge this government and we will continue to protect our members. No matter what it takes, no matter what it takes, we will be there for them. So please, 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 if you're not in the POA, join the POA. And whatever your workplace, join a union. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. To join the POA, sign up today by talking to your local POA representative or by visiting poauk.org.uk.